So, the year was 2011, probably one of the best years in gaming with critically acclaimed titles like Portal 2, Skyrim, and Deus Ex all entering the scene, introducing me to a gaming platform with its own culture and community. Through Valve's social network, Steam, I fell right into place with my fellow gamers, exchanging my favorite games, music, and fan-made artwork with individuals all over the globe. I didn't care how crappy my first PC was. I was enthralled with this new gaming experience, even when I figured terms like bottleneck and lag spike were catchphrases for secret weapons. Games like TF2, Portal 2, and Spiral Knights taught me the ABCs of PC gaming, and it didn't hurt that I could get these games for dirt cheap or free altogether. Spiral Knights' approachable gameplay and aesthetic may be the reason why Steam picked it up and made it the face of their new trading program, producing profile avatars, trading cards, and in-game items for other free-to-play titles like TF2. But it wasn't out of the goodness of their heart that Valve picked up the free-to-play mantra. The smell of microtransactions was in the air, and Valve was cashing in. But that didn't mean that Spiral Knights, like its contemporaries, couldn't stand on its own two feet as an interesting gameplay experience. On its own, as a colorful, whimsical dungeon crawler type, Spiral Knights makes the grind for collectibles and, cu and currency f a pretty fun and pretty addictive pastime. Let's discuss what makes Spiral Knights such a great MMORPG for type for casual and experienced gamers alike. To be honest, I was initially turned off by its bubblegum sprite aesthetic, but it grew on me. If you're like me, you reach for you usually reach for your cyberpunk metroidvania FPS type titles before anything else, you'll find Spiral Knights to be immensely refreshing. In Spiral Knights, you play the role of a knight belonging to the Spiral Order. Can't get any more straightforward than that. An interplanetary guild of glowy-eyed critters that crash land on an unknown planet named Cradle. As a knight, you'll join your brethren in establishing outposts and battling monsters throughout the dungeon that fill the planet's interior, known as the Clockwork. As you progress, you will uncover the secrets of the mysterious energy powering the planet and harness it to power your derelict ship and continue your journey across the galaxy searching for a way to save your home world. The plot isn't riveting, at least for me. It was easy to forget the grander scheme of things as you battle through dungeons, grinding for heat and crowns to level up your weapons. Story elements are less interwoven as you'll find that everything is mostly set up to prepare you for your first inevitable purchase of energy so that you can buy weapons and upgrades. As of 2022, there are only a couple of elements of gameplay that concern its leveling system and currency that actually matter, at least according to the time I spent in the game. That's heat, energy, and crowns. Frankly, it's still all confusing as hell, but it's not as bad as it was at launch. Heat is the resource that is used to level up equipment. It is acquired by collecting special consumables called embers. Embers are small heat tokens that are found in the clockworks by defeating monsters and exploring. Crowns are pretty much the only currency you can collect by smashing crates or defeating enemies in clockwork, and energy is another form of currency which can be purchased for real world money, then sold for crowns via the in-game energy depot. It's all BS and it's more complicated than the stock exchange. It's a wonder why you see the most players gathered around the energy depot like it's New Year's on Wall Street. That said, it isn't impossible like other games with microtransactions to have an enjoyable time without making real world purchases, at least as noticeably as I progress. Combat and gameplay in Spiral Knights is very meat and potatoes. You attack, you defend, sometimes you shoot. It depends on what two weapons you decide to carry in your loadout. Yes, only two weapons can be equipped at a time for a range and a melee attack. Usually, no matter the game, I choose a very close and personal weapon scheme, but sometimes in Knights you'll find that keeping your distance from an enemy is critical if you want to avoid the various effects of their melee attacks. Choosing the right tool for the job is critical as you will come across different enemy types with different weaknesses. Businesses. Choosing the right combat companion or sprite is also very, very important. It's hard to feel powerful when you're hacking away at the same enemies or taking a beating while your sprite casually watches from the sidelines like mine did. So you want to make sure that in addition to leveling up your weapons and armor, you're feeding your sprite regularly with minerals found in clockwork which upgrades its class effectiveness. To be honest though, so initially, Spiral Knights is as easy as strawberry cake on a sunny winter Sunday morning. If you're from Seattle, you know what I'm talking about i highly recommend increasing the difficulty maybe even the max settings if you're looking for a reasonable challenge 
Spider-Man's heartwarming tone could be likened to, to the Nintendo Zelda, with its artistic design featuring vibrancy of colors and charming characters that take precedence over photorealistic textures gamers are always clamoring for these days. That said, this game holds up as well as you'd expect it to. At a glance, it's eye-catching and its lower resolution textures are hidden by its cartoony aesthetic, but at times you can't help but feel like it harkens to the generation of web-based action titles like those you'd find on Nickelodeon or Cartoon Network.com. And trust me, I know this age very well well. That said, it's supporting my monitor's native resolution at 4K and 60Hz refresh rate without a problem. Settings were limited though. You'll find that the only adjustments that matter include anti-aliasing and frame rate limiter, which is defaulted at 60fps. Irritably, at 4K, text, menus, and UI were super teeny tiny and had no adjuster in the settings page. This made engaging in dialogue and other story elements unnecessarily difficult, further disconnecting me from the plot behind the action. But what is as important as what you see is what you hear. And Spiral Nights is no slouch in acoustic storytelling, creating unique atmospheres through catchy music and sound effects. From the lighthearted warm tones of your HQ in the town of Haven to the dangers of the dungeons riddling the planet's core, the musical arrangements match the scene with orchestral pieces that bring both levity and menace. Voice work doesn't get in the way, and no characters in particular stand out, especially on the fact that there is no spoken dialogue. This game truly sets you up for a multiplayer adventure online with your friends. That's where the magic is. And that leads me to the biggest questions to consider when looking at a title this old. Is there even anyone still playing to go on an adventure with? There's definitely a small community of those who play, most that are not child predators, are grinding away to make transactions at the energy depot. If you're just starting out, finding someone who isn't looking to trade will be a challenge. While Spiral Knight's market isn't a, as robust as that of TF2, for example, if you find pleasure in the exchange of goods, you could find a niche market of individuals who share your interests. To be honest, this year I've played about 8 to 10 hours of the game on my own, not spending a dime for any in-game currency. That that said, I was able to make, I was able to have a good time, but of course I haven't left the hand holding phase of the gameplay, so I'd imagine your experience will become more reliant on purchases as the game progresses. In conclusion, in 2022, 11 years since its release, Spiral Knights holds its own as an introductory MMOG title. Is it worth investing in? Probably not. There are plenty of other MMORPG titles with more robust marketplaces that trade and trading features. Without regular updates and a large enough community to support the economy, I see that there are better titles to move on to once you've got your taste of what an MMLG is like with Spiral Knights. If you're playing for the atmosphere and adventure, Spiral Knights is a satisfying experience, at least until microtransactions get in the way and become relevant. With all that said and done, I'd like to thank you also very much for watching this brief little video. If you liked the video, let me know with a like and subscribe if you want to see more gaming and tech content from my channel. Let me know in the comments if you've ever played Spiral Knights and what MMO did you move on to as you progress. Thanks again for watching and Godspeed your return.